Today I wanted to talk about Tunaki or Phoenix Graft. Tunaki is a way to use older material that maybe has died um, or you have interesting piece of dead wood. Uh, this is a Tunaki that we've been working on for how long Homer? Six years? Six or seven years. Homer had this, this is buttonwood, con, Concarpus erectus. Um, it had gotten the mite and it had gotten cold uh, eight years ago and the actual tree had died. Now this was all solid. Obviously you can see that this was artificially carved for more interest in movement. I carved it five years ago and then recarved it three years ago. Probably could use some more detail work. Definitely could use more detail work. Um, but we really wanted to get it developed and there was no rush. This is, <clears throat> again, uh, six or seven years from a smaller cutting. And it's it's a nice buttonwood. Uh, uh, it's growing up decently. There's a few things that we would do differently. Uh, but if you look at the back of it, it's actually a young tree that was placed tight to the deadwood. It was screwed in. As this grows, those screws will slowly grow over. But it's a seven-year-old tree on a hundred-year-old piece of driftwood. It's still in training. It's probably got another three to five years to go, but it's really becoming a very beautiful Tunaki. Now, <clears throat> Tunaki is also has a pretty bad reputation, especially if it's not done right. This one right here, in fact, could have been done a little tighter. Things have shifted over the years. This originally was inside of this groove tight, but has worked out. It's been um, reworked and and re uh, uh, shifting uh, a few times, but it's pretty good the way it sets because in the from the front you don't see any of that, and it looks like a tight vein. How they generally look as they get older. Um, so from the front, it is a pretty attractive tree. Uh, today, we're going to show you how to do this. Uh, it's going to we're going to have some stops and starts, but this is going to be an interesting way to take maybe a tree that had died and uh, work it and um, give it new life. That's why they call it phoenix graft, rising from the ashes from a dead uh, dead material and bringing it back into a beautiful tree. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, this right here is a customer's tree, <laughs> a dead stump basically. Uh, he did it in our beginner um, juniper class. Then he, uh, I think, tried to save it. It was a juniperus parsoni. He tried to save it. It um, had gotten real bad spider mites, real bad scale. Then he had issues with the watering. He, we had issues with the fertilizing. Ultimately, the tree succumbed. Uh, he, he is a professional, and you know sometimes if, it's, if something goes wrong, he doesn't bring it. Now that since we moved, and it's 45 minutes away from our other location, by the time he brought it, it was really too far gone. Um, we tried to spray it with neem oil to kill the scale, but the tree was pretty much already on its way out. All the foliage just started changing. And he really liked it, and he was really upset about it. And I told him, I said, well, you're not going to save the tree. It's not going to pop, obviously. Junipers don't pop from bare wood. But let's make it into a phoenix graft. And I figured that would be something we could do to kind of show what you can do with old material. Because it is fairly large. It has an inch, inch and a quarter trunk. And it has kind of inches. I mean, really, if this were mine, I would. this would become a burn pile. But it is his, and it has sentimental value because he's had it for eight years. And I told him we could put a nice young juniper there and, and work it. And it'd be an op give, me, give me a good opportunity to actually do the class and also kind of show people out in, on the blog and out there how we do it. I went and purchased this a few months ago specifically for this. This is not Juniper's uh, Parsoni. This is uh, Shimpaku. Juniper Chimpaku. The foliage is a lot finer. Um, it has a thin trunk. 
it can be manipulated tight to this and it can be bent and moved and it's vigorous and it's healthy and it's young and a young whip and flexible so first thing we're going to do is strip the bark off uh, give it some rudimentary carving give it some um, work at the base carve a little groove along the back that I can feed these whips into and then either use screws or some sort of way to fasten it tight so as these grow they fill that groove up to where ultimately it looks like a solid um, live vein on this dead piece of wood. We'll also treat the bottom so it doesn't rot away in the bonsai soil. And get rid of a lot of sections so when we put it in there it'll be it'll withstand rot. It will be treated with a, some sort of sealant on the bottom and lime sulfur up top to give it this aged white deadwood appearance. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute. Thanks. Okay, I took the piece of uh, dead juniper out, cleaned it up, not completely, but took all the loose bark off, found out what was solid, what was starting to get pithy and rotted, and cut the ends just so they looked up here more natural. Um, not terribly natural, but but just, just so we didn't have any um, loose bark so it looked aged. Then I did a carved a groove along the inside to where I can put the juniper in with an Arbor Tech. I normally would use a Makita um, for detailed work, but this is just to, to, to create the groove and the Arbor Tech is ideal for that. Uh, next I'm going to clean up the juniper and, and place it in there and, and work it in. I'm going to tell you a couple things. One, you don't want to repot junipers in August here in Florida. Killing a, a tree, uh, repotting a juniper in August is, is invitation for death. But um, we repot our junipers here in Florida in January, February, March. Here in Central Florida, down in South Florida, be closer to January, February. And um, North Florida, up in the Panhandle, they can do it April. Um, I have repotted them as late as May, but that's pushing it. The roots kind of get into a heat dormancy in, in our intense heat. So this is already in a bulb pan. It's already short. I'm not going to really mess with the roots much. I'm just going to put it into bonsai soil um, around the edge and work it in. And next uh, January, February, March, I'll come in there and comb it out and repot it correctly. But we're just going to take just, just uh, kind of squeeze it in there and just take enough. It's not pot bound at all in here, but it has good roots. So I'll be able to work it in there with cutting zero roots and very minimal root disturbance. That's why I decided to use this tree. Uh, I'll show you in just a second. Real quick, uh, the way I prep the deadwood after I carve it is I use a torch, butane torch, to subdue all of the rough um, fraying and the rough uh, marks, whether it's my Arbor Tech or my hand tools. Then I take a brass brush and clean all the deadwood with the grain. It gives it a nice aged appearance. It also gets rid of any of the loose pieces. And then after I cleaned it up pretty good and got to the um, where it goes from black to a lighter color underneath, you can see the lines are much more subdued. You can see that or not. The lines are much more subdued and aged. Then I'll treat this. Hitting it with the torch also helps retard any rot that's below the sole line. And again, treating that with um, Minwax wood hardener or another plastic or agent uh, below the sole line will do really good to arrest any rot for a while at least. Then you'll want to treat it with lime sulfur twice a year. But that's how we prep the deadwood before we do any lime sulfur or putting the tree next to it. Okay, this is the completed work today. Again, it's Juniperus parsonii dead stump with a young shimpaku wrapped around it. A couple things 
with this one in particular, I did not cut any of the roots. The old root, the old soil had lots of sand in it, but it was not pot bound by any stretch of the imagination. I just put it in there and put bonsai soil in and around it with the chopstick all the way around it. By the way, this is the bonsai soil that we have at the shop. This is what we use exclusively. This is what we sell on the website. Um, I don't use any organics in my mix because I only use organic fertilizer. That's all my trees get their um, microbial action through the organic fertilizer and the composting that we do. But we do have 100% aggregate in our mix. Uh, junipers and black pines especially really like a very open granular mix. This particular one, if you look, there's a little space where it isn't really tight. That'll always be a problem if I took this off. Because it's August, you don't ever cut more than 30% off of the juniper. Um, I did cut around 20% just to take these side shoots off so I could see what I was working with. Um, but I left all this on here because if I took this off, it would the vigor of this juniper would just be sapped. It would basically sit here for another year before it really started growing and at that point it would be a possibility where it could start to die. I left the vigorous tips. We want these to grow unrestricted to thicken up these shoots in and amongst those veins. Um, this right here is there not only to keep the vigor up but also to fill this gap in because everything from here down below will swell and thicken and this will make this fuse nice and tight. We did treat it with some wood hardener underneath. I'm going to lime sulfur treat this in a month or so. There's no rush. We did treat it with the um, flames. Uh, and I used the brush to kind of clean it up before we um, uh, put the uh, tree on. I did run it in all the grooves that we created. And as you can see, I did not use um, screws. This is way too thin for screws. Um, I will, as these thicken up every month or so, um, move them. Just move them about a quarter of an inch each. We loosen it and then move it. But I want to keep these in the groove nice and tight. Over the next two or three months, they'll actually start to um, set in that angle. And they won't position or, or, or move around too much after the, uh, the first six months. And then within a year, if they're fertilized very heavily with organics and put out full sun. I'll put this in full sun in about two weeks. Even though I didn't cut any roots, um, we did knock some soil off of it. It is August, so I'm going to put it in partial sun for the next two to three weeks. And then I'm going to load it up with some organics um, every three inches on the surface. And I'll put it out in full sun. And that will, uh, especially once it starts cooling off in October, that'll start to pop out and grow like crazy and thicken up this line that I'm concerned about. This will back bud prolifically all along here because ultimately the tree is here. Um, I like to see some deadwood or, or some live veins along the deadwood and this is a good area where as this swells and gets larger it'll be a live vein. This will probably end up being removed because it's too low as a first branch but um, It'll probably be removed within the next um, three years. I may leave it on there for the next two to make sure this swells up. And then by the third year, we'll pop it off. But if something pops here, I'll let it grow up until it's long enough. And then I'll wire that down. And at that time, I'll cut this off um, to make room for that. Uh, but for now, this needs to stay on there. Uh, the only time I ever cut more than 30% of a juniper at one time is in the winter um, or early spring. Uh, this right here is going to end up being my top. The angle will probably slightly change right about here. It's going to have some good movement and some interest. Uh, that'll be a branch. That's why I kept it. This shoot right here will be a branch. Um, I'll cut that back and we'll start working on it in a, in a year or so. But we need to have a bunch of new branches pop along that live vein in the back. And it will. Oops. And we will. <laughs> sorry. And we will bring all of those out front for the individual branches. So it'll start looking more like this. It'll start looking like a real tree. It'll be harder to, and harder to tell what's dead and what's alive as the years go by. Anytime you take a close look at, at um, Tanaki, you usually can tell. Anybody who, who knows what they're looking at can tell. A really well done Tanaki is very difficult to uh, achieve. Um, because of that, most Tanakis are much less valuable. If this was a buttonwood that was not Tanaki, I would probably, with a trunk that's, you know, three and a half, four inches, uh, retail with this kind of branch work, you're probably looking at four to five hundred dollars. Because it is Tanaki, it's worth about half of that. 
um, even though it's in a 20 inch pot um, probably would sell it for this isn't mine but what is worth retail $250 I did do all the work on this but I did it for a customer and he was gracious enough to bring it in um, for some work today and also to, to for this video so year one year six <laughs> thanks for watching guys I appreciate it I'll talk to you soon